Hi, this is Frank Romano, Professor Emeritus at the Rochester Institute of Technology. We're going to have the second in our series, of, I don't know what order it'll be in, but it's the second one I'm doing, uh, that talks about liquid toner, and specifically the uh, Hewlett Packard Indigo uh, system. Uh, it's uh, one of the very few on earth that use liquid toners. Now, what's a liquid toner? In a previous video, I talked about toner particles. I talked about how they were small pieces of pigment that were surrounded and coated with, a, with some plastic that could hold an electrical charge. In the area of liquid toner, what you have are these toner particles um, are essentially floating in some mineral oil. And the toner particles, therefore, can be smaller than they are in, in a particle or dry toner format. Um, and can be moved around without as much energy as they moved around in other areas, other kinds of digital printing. So th this is the very f basis of the uh, Indigo system, the ability to have liquid toner. Now, why, why do you want liquid toner? Well, you want liquid toner uh, because it gives you a look and feel very much like offset lithography. That, this is why users love it. Uh, th th that feeling that it is ink, real offset ink. Now, on the dry toner side, it's not that there's a problem with that, and most people love that as well. In fact, there are many more dry toner machines out there than there are liquid toner machines, and they give you a different kind of look and feel, which some people have had to get used to. And now that there are so many machines out there, the dry toner machines are, are accepted, and the quality of those machines are, are superb. In fact, the standards, for, I think, for printing uh, quality today are in the digital printing side. The Indigo machine is different. And that is because it doesn't need high heat fusing. So the toner particles in the mineral oil um, essentially um, are pumped from an area at the bottom of the machine up to the heads. And there the image has been created on an, another form of organic photoconductor. Um, so a laser has charged it. And then the, the ink, if you will, the electro ink as they call it, um, flows over the entire plate area. And it only adheres to those areas where it's been charged. The rest of the ink flows down and goes back into the reservoir to be used again. So there's, you, you do not have some of the issues that you have with dry toner. You now have your image in, in the toner form on the, on the uh, organic photoconductor or plate. Then it is transferred to a blanket. Very similar to offset lithography. In fact, the blanket in, in many cases looks the same. Uh, different formulation, of course. And then from there, uh, slight heat, not, not a lot, just a slight amount of heat is used to transfer it onto the substrate, the paper or material that you're going to print on. Um, and it, at that point, it becomes a plastic sheet, a clear polymetric sheet that goes down onto the substrate. Um, and and the, it's completely clean at that point. Everything that was on the blanket is transferred. There's no residual material to clean off. In many cases, you are cleaning residual toner from the drums of other kinds of uh, dry toner systems. So there's no fusing, there's not a lot of heat inside the machine at all. Another thing that is unique about the, uh, the liquid ink, liquid toner that you use in the indigo, is that it can do spot colors. You can have Pantone colors, fluorescence, metallics. Uh, uh, in fact, you can have a color matched, whatever it may be. You send it to a certain facility and they will make uh, mix that ink for you. The machines can have from four, that is CMYK, to seven ink canisters in them. Um, and that gives you the ability then to mix uh, spot colors as well. There are roll-fed and sheet-fed versions of the uh, Indigo machines. Uh, the roll-fed machines are quite fast and are used by uh, those people in the publication business or photo book business. On the sheet-fed side, they're used by commercial printers, but most of the uh, digital labels done with toner today are being done with the Indigo machine. There are over a thousand machines doing labels, and that's a very large part of their marketplace. They can print on a variety of sub uh, substrates, but the substrate, again, has to be tuned to the toner that they use. The liquid toner requires a special coating, in some cases, on the substrate. So you can, you can use standard papers, but normally there's a coating that the manufacturer has put on it before they've sold it to you. Um, as I said, it's the leading system from label printing, especially because of the fact that it can match the spot color. So therefore, branding is very important in that particular part of the world. In the future, I think we might see larger sheet sizes. Uh, right now, 13 by 19 is the uh, sheet size. The image area is slightly smaller than that. 
Um, and perhaps into the future we'll see higher speed. Um, one of the major uh, attributes that's been added to the, to the system since Hewlett Packard acquired the company has been multiple paper canisters. So you have the ability to mix different substrates uh, in a job. So you can have one kind of paper for the uh, text of your document and another kind of paper for the uh, uh, cover of your document. And as I said, there's a wide variety of materials, including synthetic materials. There's a big movement on right now for printers to find new opportunities in, in the industry and synthetic materials now give them that opportunity to sell to users who want something different or unique for a particular application. We'll be talking about other digital printing later, but that's it for now. Take care.